Hello and uh, welcome to uh, the next vlog. Sorry it's taken so long um, to get this up to you. Uh, obviously during lockdown not been able to get to the boat very often. Um, still sort of doing the maintenance bits and pieces on the boat. Um, this time I'm going to be looking quite heavily into the galvanic isolator on the boat. Um, now when we bought the Water Lily uh, we got one of these which is a simple plug-in uh, galvanic isolator. I don't even see the, uh, the type it is and all that sort of thing. Um, but it's really simple to fit. It just fits in between your uh, your mains power. So your uh, your shore power will come in into here and then this will plug into your boat. So it just sits in between the two. Um, it's very simple to fit. Um, and it's been working fine as far as I know. Um, no idea... Um, and you can't never ever be 100% sure that they're doing the job that they're supposed to do. Um, I've tested it, seems to be okay. Um, but now we've had the boat for a while, I wanted to go a step further um, and use a, a proper one which, uh, which actually fits to the boat itself. And uh, after a lot of research, this is the one that I'm doing, I'm going to fit. This is, uh, I just see the, uh, see the bits and pieces on there. So the earth just comes in from the shoreline to here and carries on to the boat here. Uh, there's some things to watch out for when you fit, so I'll go through that at the time. Uh, but yeah, that's it. really simple. But the important thing is it's got a nice um, di uh, meter on it so you can actually see what's going on. And the testing procedure is much easier on it. So you can be sure that it is actually doing what you think it is. And this is one of the few that's actually compliant as well, um, which I'll go through later on. Um, so yeah, so apart from that, uh, it's a bit of an electrics weekend actually this is. Um, I'm going to be replacing this as well, which is the uh, the shoreline connection of the boat itself. So that will go on onto the side and uh, and mains power will go in here. The one we've got at the moment is a little bit old, a little bit tatty, faded and rusty. So I thought, well, let's... Uh, Let's go the whole hog and uh, have a, an electrics weekend. So, without further ado, here's what we did. All right. Right. Okay. This is the old mains power. You see, it's a little bit uh, old and uh, worse for wear. Uh, if I just put the new one next to it, you can see see the difference. So that'd be a lot uh, a lot nicer. Uh, so that's just undone by two screws. One on the left, which I've uh, taken out already, and uh, one on the right. So I'll just do this. Just take this out. Sometimes these get rusted in, so uh, once I've got them out, I'll put some copper grease on before I uh, put them back on again. Just have a quick look. Come on. Off. All right. Okay. Just pop them down there. All right. So let's pull this away from the wall and uh, see what happens. Yes. Okay. You can see it's uh, quite tight on there, so I'm going to need to be careful. Right, okay, so this has just taken the uh, the cover off now and pulled it away from the uh, from the boat a little bit. See, it's held in with mastic, so that's that's why that's taken a while. But uh, in here, you can see uh, why I want to change it. It's getting, looking a little bit rusty. Uh, plus, I need to do some tests. Um, one of the things that's really important when fitting a galvanic isolator is where the earth connects to the hull. So I need to check that the galvanic isolator goes beyond uh, where that is so uh, I'll sort of do a diagram and all that sort of thing later on just so, so you can see but uh, but yeah so I'll take all this off and I'll remove that so I can uh, connect another wire to the earth so that I can just do some checking. Right so hope you can see where, we are, where I am now in relation to where I was so it comes down there underneath here and then I'm trying to get you an overview it comes into the boat down the bottom there and then it's this, uh, this blue cable coming up here 
can you see oops can you see this one this is it as it comes in comes all the way up into the the master switch and the trip uh, so what I need to do is just open this up have a look what's uh, what's behind here uh, and then what I need to do is to split the earth so that I can sort of take it into segments so I can see what's uh, what's what okay let's get that off right so that's identifying it a little bit easier so power comes in here into uh, the trip you see the, uh, the two wires going in there and this is where all the earths are connected so uh, which so that earth there is where it comes in uh, this one don't worry about this one too much this one is just going down to the inverter so that's the earth for the inverter and this one carries on into the boat uh, down via the socket so I'm going to take take this face plate off just to have a look see what's going on there uh, but what I'm going to have to do really is just to double check this earth right one moment so just as I thought uh, power comes down through here into this double socket uh, and then just carries on via this blue cable to the 240 volts for the rest of the boat so this is the area that I'm looking at all around here so I need to take off this earth that comes into the boat via this blue wire and just see if that is still connected to the hull I'm hoping it's not uh, if it is then I'm going to have to find out where but I'm, I'm hoping it's not if it's not then it makes fitting the isolator so much easier all right here goes right so what I have done is I've obviously separated all the earths so they're all separate now and what I've done is used a multimeter uh, to check if there's any continuity between any of these earths and the hull now fortunately nothing on this one which is great because that's where it comes in from the main socket so there is nothing I need to do following this one so this comes straight in from the earth from the shoreline straight through there but this one here which carries on to the earth on the boat down here is connected to the hull so that's lovely and it's nice and straightforward now so I just need to make sure that all of that is connected the other side of the galvanic isolator so basically the isolator is going to fit in between these two earths together and that earth coming in and that's all I need to do but it's just how to get it all tidy and get it all done so it looks nice and uh, so I'll go away and scratch my head and think what I can do there all right but in, in essence that's what it is so there is nothing that side of the earth that's on the boat that's come straight in from shore everything is on this side which is uh, the way it needs to be if you don't get that right then the galvanic isolator doesn't actually do anything so you do need to check that right okay let's go and have a look right okay that's now all done so power comes in here and the earth goes out to here goes to shore earth on here power continues coming in here and this is where the earth earth connects round and into the main fuse box well the trip as normal and that carries on into the boat so all this does is it sits in between the earths so earth coming in there carrying on into the boat really important that nothing else connects to the boat this side of the earth so that comes straight in from the shore nothing else connected that side okay uh, if there is then it renders the whole thing pretty much useless uh, especially if it's connected to the hull I've checked it I've uh, done a continuity check and the earth here which is connected to here connects to the hull so that should now work okay done hello right so that's now all fitted uh, so the boat's protected um, you don't always have to have a galvanic isolator if you're out and about cruising all the time or you very rarely connect up to um, shoreline. It's mainly for boats that are always in a marina. Uh, protects you and others um, as you all hook up. Uh, it's all to do with the difference of, sort of metal in the water uh, and the currents that it causes. 
Um, it's no substitute for having your um, your anodes on your boat. You still need to have those, but this just offers a little bit more protection. Anyway, I was going through all the uh, documentation on the device I've got. The one I got was from Aquafax. Um, I decided on that one purely because it's got um, a compliance on it. There aren't many around for galvanic isolators, but this one is an American one, which is the ABYC compliance, which just means that should a fault occur on the device, it will fail closed. So you still have your earth uh, rather than open, um, which is a, always a good thing. Obviously, safety comes first rather than corrosion. Um, yeah, so looking through the sheet, it gives quite a nice picture here about uh, how it's uh, how it should all be wired in so I don't know if you can if you can see that if I could show you one here so it's very simple to wire in as I've sort of gone through with you uh, obviously this is uh, this is from the do, 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 do. right yeah so the shoreline comes in here uh, so the shoreline comes in here there's just the earth that goes through the isolator and then carries on as normal. Um, now, you just need to be careful that it's all wired in correctly. Um, and that's it. Didn't really need to do anything. Just keep an eye on the, the uh, meter every now and again, just to make sure that it's not uh, not failing. And you can test it as well as um, just with a multimeter. Um, but that's it. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. A um, little bit different, um, actually on the boat, which is great. Um, more bits and pieces coming shortly. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.